memory, 512 gigabytes on a high-speed DDR5, uh, uh, but on a PCIe card? What sort of madness is this? It's a PCIe card with DIMM slots and a weird little ribbon cable so that you can actually get to it. It's CXL! CXL has been here for years, and yet it's been here for years in the making. And CXL is sort of hot right now because of the pressure that AI is creating in the market for memory devices that are fast. And this is poised to become a lot more commonplace this year and next year than many expected to be, I think, even just one or two years ago. It's like CXL, it's on again, it's off again, it's the hot thing for databases, and now it's AI. I sort of see it with AI. It's partly because these brand new fancy pants high core count Xeon CPUs and Epic CPUs are at peak awesome if, and only if, you have populated all of the memory channels. They're fully populated on modern platforms. If you don't put in all the memory, it, it runs a lot slower, and it may not run consistently. So when you need just a little bit more memory, what do you gotta do? You gotta pull all this memory that's already in here out and replace it with modules that are twice as big. You don't really want mismatched memory if you can possibly help it. Well, not necessarily. CXL could help in that scenario too. But that wasn't on your radar. Let's chat about CXL in 2025 and the cool stuff you can do with it. So before we talk about CXL, let's talk about memory configurations, and specifically the memory configurations that we have here. This is our Intel 6787P from Supermicro, specifically the 222HTN. I just did a review on this. We did a bunch of benchmarks. It was a lot of fun. It's based on the new Intel Xeon 6 CPUs that just launched in February, Q1 of 2025. This platform is plug and play with all this CXL goodness and uh, it has all the internal plumbing necessary to support CXL. But why might we need CXL? I've got one terabyte per socket in this. It's, there's two 64 gig DIMMs per channel in this configuration. Why would I need more than two terabytes of memory in this platform? Suppose I was using one DIMM per channel instead. I'd have one terabyte of memory, not two, so 768 gigabytes per socket. But the memory would be running significantly faster than it is now. 6.4 gigatransfers per second versus the roughly 5.2 gigatransfers per second I've got right now in this two slot or two DIM per slot configuration. Most of the time, the trade-off uh, of more DIMs is reduced memory speed. So you increase capacity, but increased capacity is worth it to certain customers. But you also need to understand your workload and how it operates to know to what extent CXL memory expansion might benefit you. I've also got this EPIC system. This is a 12 memory channel configuration and 12 memory slots. And you only populate six slots, well, that's really not a good idea from a performance standpoint either. This is also based on a super micro motherboard that has been qualified for CXL testing. But be warned, you have to have the latest BIOS. If you have an older BIOS, that's not gonna work. CXL device doesn't even show up. So you don't populate all the memory channels, you get suboptimal performance and vendors really don't put much work into testing or qualifying configurations where you've got mixed DIMMs. So like if I had you know two DIMMs per channel and the DIMMs were not matched per channel, I mean technically that should work, but a lot of the time that's not really qualified and you're inviting instability. In a configuration like this, it's more likely to work because it's one DIMM per channel, not mixing the DIMMs you know, on the platform is still a recommendation, but it'll probably work better-ish, except for performance stuff. So these CXL devices are from Smart Modular. I've got two CXL PCIe configurations here. The single slot version, this is up to 512 gigabytes of memory and four 128 gig DIMMs. And this one is a two slot configuration that takes extra PCIe uh, supplemental power because this is just over the 75 watt limit of PCIe. It's a Gen 5 interface in both cases, 16 lanes. The controller here, and you can see that we've got eight DIMMs, <laughs> eight DIMMs on this card, up to 128 gigabyte DIMMs. So you could have one terabyte of memory in this card. Now, uh, memory's weird. Uh, the cost of 128 gig DIMM is, you know, more than double a 64 gigabyte DIMM, and the cost of a 256 gigabyte DIMM is way, way more than double the cost of 128 gig DIMM. But you plug these into the system, and the PCIe slot has to be a PCIe slot that supports the CXL, becomes a CXL slot basically. So the platform has to be fully qualified and tested and support it. But you do that and you get another terabyte of memory or another 512 gigabytes of memory or how you've got your CXL device populated with DDR5 DIMMs. 
With CXL, the system knows that the memory is in an add-in card and by default will intelligently use it so that it doesn't slow the system down because the memory is a bit slower than real memory because it's through that PCIe interface. It's not through the, uh, you know, a normal memory bus. And when I say it's a bit slower, it's also the fastest Gen 5 device that you can possibly get. So you might be thinking, doesn't it bottleneck? PCIe Gen 5 is really fast, I know, but isn't PCIe glacial compared to how much main memory bandwidth you have? Well, I've got news for you. PCIe has been get getting faster over time, faster than memory has been getting faster. Uh, but you might assume, as a practical matter, that in practical scenarios, uh, it's basically fine um, for CXL. Uh, it, Intel's done some of their own testing, which I'll show in a minute. But yes, there is a bandwidth disparity, sure. But this specific design from Smart Modular is nearly as fast as it can possibly be to take full advantage of the PCIe Gen 5 connectivity. So I don't think we're gonna see anything faster until maybe PCIe Gen 6 or 7. Because it's PCIe, you also have increased latency. And I think that is actually the more relevant thing to discuss. And so we will segue for just a moment to discuss uh, bandwidth constraints imposed by latency. For latency in general, memory is engineered to be as close to the CPU as possible because speed of light is a problem we have not yet overcome. Probably never will. A lot of Herculean things are done in a computer and in computer microarchitectures and computer engineering to hide latency. And the latency of the memory interface is definitely make or break for your experience using the computer. CPUs that have lots of cache, the latency will actually get a little worse because you have to go through more cache to get to main memory, effectively. I'm like oversimplifying there a little bit. But since memory is cached in the cache, if the cache is intelligent, the cache eases the pressure on main memory. And so more of the operations happen between the CPU core and cache than between the CPU core and the rest of main memory. And so CXL adds some layers on top of that, even in terms of the protocol and transactions and that sort of thing. And so for PCIe, yes, that is even farther from the CPU than the memory interface. And so there is a latency penalty associated with that. The latency is gonna be a fair bit higher. Now, as long as we're talking about practical matters, I probably should also talk about two socket systems versus one, two versus one. Effectively, memory latency in servers is on the order of 100 nanoseconds or so, and you can see that from the output of our Intel memory latency checker software. I have the CXL device configured to show up as another NUMA node. So there's two NUMA nodes per socket because they've done that to optimize memory latency, even though you know, the memory associated with the socket historically has just been one, they actually do two because of this. And we've got a mysterious fifth NUMA node. Well, that's the CXL device. And so we can directly measure the bandwidth there and the latency and everything else. And if you look at it versus the latency to go from this socket to this other socket, it's not really that much more. For the benchmark results, it's it really, it doesn't look a lot worse than main memory, at least main memory in some of those worst case scenarios where you have to go cross socket. And part of the reason it looks better than, I'll tell you, reality is not quite as good as the benchmarks make it look good because the CXL protocol is designed to help hide latency. It's part of the architecture. And that's the thing that's been worked on and worked out for the last couple of years. Out of order execution, memory read update transactions, and, and more stuff has gone into that. CXL might run on top of PCIe lanes, but not all PCIe lanes are CXL compatible. So you're not necessarily gonna be able to use one of these in an arbitrary slot in your chassis. You have to check the motherboard layout manual. In the case of our super micro chassis, the really brilliant thing that they've done here is you, you can physically move around the PCIe lanes with these patch cables, which is awesome. And yeah, the CXL lanes are closer to the CPU cores than other PCI, like PCIe lanes that you might find in the system. So all that is things that you have to consider. Now, if we switch from latency to the bandwidth side, it's easy to do the math. DDR5 bandwidth is calculated as the data rate times the bus width times two, because it's double data rate. And that's pretty easy math to do. You can see the, the table on screen here for some different common memory speeds. Now to be sure, servers running at like 7200, 8800, they're rare. Intel does that, which is insane. Like Intel's always prided themselves on top shelf memory configuration, but mostly it's 5200, 4800, 6000, 6200 in some scenarios. But yeah, at 4800, we're only talking 38.4 gigabytes per second, you know, 44.8 gigabytes per second for DDR5 5600. Our configuration here is only DDR5 5200, again, because we're running two DIMMs per channel. Each one of these sockets is eight memory channels, and yet, physically, you probably notice there's 16 DIMMs per socket. So, now four lanes, 
of Gen 5 bandwidth is about four gigabytes per second. 16 gigabytes for four lanes of bandwidth, that should ring a bell for, you know, you've got your four lane NVMe. So 64 gigabytes per second for an X16 slot. Now PCIe, unlike DDR5, is duplex, which means that you can go 64 gigabytes per second each way at the same time. Over here, we have eight channels. And so the bottleneck to the memory is uh, a little worse because you get physically more memory. You got 64 gigabytes per second from each device. So yes, depending on what you're doing, if you're running memory at full speed, that makes sense. But the reality is, as a practical matter, it really, uh, you, you're not really up against that limit. And also, a lot of the time, you'll deploy two of these. Well, you'll have one of these per socket. So in this system, it would be optimal to have two of the 512 gigabyte uh, smart modular devices, one wired to each socket, one physically wired into each socket. You'd be surprised how many organizations actually are deploying dual socket systems, not because they need a ton of cores, but for the increased memory capacity. It's like, oh yes, we need two DIMMs per channel and we need two sockets. There's organizations actually out there that are focusing on one DIMM per channel for the increased speed, but they'll get a second memory socket. And that is a the lowest latency and highest bandwidth option. But CXL is getting to the point where it's less complex and less expensive than the two slot option. So CXL may actually drive some organizational selections of a single socket server with a CXL device for overflow. So it's like, okay, yes, we'll support one and a half or three terabytes of memory in a single socket configuration. And then we'll have an extra terabyte or two of CXL for anything that overruns main memory or oops, three, you know, a year later, three terabytes wasn't enough. We'll just add a CXL device rather than reinvest investing a ton of money in memory. The penalties you get from memory behind a PCIe interconnect really aren't super severe and it really depends on the workload. So like on paper, the memory latency checker, it's much more than 3%, but for Intel's own benchmarks in flat two LM, it's about 3%. Having a third of the system memory, uh, 768 gigabytes being behind a CXL device was only good for about a 3% penalty. So Intel noticed the same thing that we were noticing on the forum doing our own experiments. Check out this slide. They were testing flat to uh, LM. And so they're doing the same kinds of tests that we are. And in a system configured where two thirds of it was, you know, wired into the socket and a third of the memory was a CXL device, they only had a 3% performance loss. And that's just because of the nature of the way that these large language models work, memory access patterns, and the fact that these devices are faster. Now the Intel test, that was DDR4. Our device is actually significantly faster because it's DDR5 PCIe Gen 5. So this can make a lot of sense for upgrading the memory capacity without necessarily having to replace the memory that you already have with higher density memory. You know, we should talk more about AI applications in particular because uh, that's interesting and we have that going on on the forum. It depends on what you're doing with a large language model. It depends on what you're doing with RAM. It depends on, on your workload. There's a lot of database workloads that also will have similar performance. And again, the NUMA node is the signal to the operating system and reasonably optimized software that, hey, uh, this memory is a little different. It's a little slower. You know, Maybe don't use it until you have overrun all the other memory. With our 222H system here, it's very, very promising results with these CXL devices. And that's one of the uh, neat things about these Intel Xeon 6 CPUs. There's also the 12 memory channel 6900 series Xeon 6 CPUs, the Intel Avenue City platform that we took a look at last year. Now that platform doesn't quite support CXL. I'm gonna have to get another super micro system or something else that'll support those 6900 CPUs in order to be able to test that. But all of our AMD Epic stuff with the latest BIOSes that I've tested on the super micro platform that are qualified, yeah, CXL. Running those large language models without GPUs from system memory, the performance is largely tied to memory bandwidth more than anything. And it's not really super optimized, which has been a surprise if you follow us on a level one forum. We have a project running that is sort of amusing these for the project. And uh, AMD's also dealt with some of these quirks. These, uh, we'll just throw more hardware at it instead of bothering the programmers. They have a special mode called NPS zero. This is for multi-socket systems where there's two sockets and the AMD's NPS zero mode lies to the operating system and just says both CPU sockets are just one large NUMA node. All the memory is all local, don't worry about it. And uh, it just works. And I was very surprised, but in the experiments that we're doing on a level one form with llama.cpp and these large language models, Generally, that does actually run better than other operational modes. So that tells you how much of a frontier the AI and large language model stuff is. NPS zero being good uh, is, is kind of absurd. And you should not run that configuration unless you really, really know exactly what you're doing. I'd initially just done that for the lulls, 
and then it's like, oh, this is actually like 10 or 15% faster. Uh, there is a patch on the, on the issue tracker where if you load two copies of the LLM, one for each socket, and you get tons of amazing performance. So adding an extra 512 gigabytes or one terabyte of memory with an optimal memory slot configuration, that can take a lot of the pressure off of the rest of the memory in the system and will keep performance high. Now, uh, is, are there alternatives? Not really. If you use storage, that's an order of magnitude slower and uh, much, much larger latency. And to be sure, a lot of the software plumbing hasn't been done to support that. And also like NVIDIA, NVIDIA hasn't been super keen on software approaches that expand VRAM limits. So imagine that you had two or four GPUs in here, but you're gonna far outrun the amount of VRAM that you have. Can you use something else? Well, you can use system memory, but uh, it's memory mapped and yeah, but wait a minute. This is also system memory. Can you use direct memory transfers with that? And it turns out, yes. And that is actually less plumbing to do than GPU direct or using you know, offload from your NVMe to your uh, video device VRAM. So CXL and GPUs could be something amazing, but the software is not quite there yet. We, are, we do have some experiments on that sort of stuff going on in the forum as well. And that is a lot of fun and that's probably gonna have to be a future video. And in case you're wondering more about the error support, like how can this possibly work? There's a lot of plumbing that's already in the Linux kernel, but Smart Modular also has a Linux command line utility that really lets you get at some interesting configuration options on these cards. The main use of that utility is to inject errors, because with RAS, that's one of the functions. Like how do you test it to make sure that it will handle errors? How do you make sure that my own stack will handle errors appropriately? Well, uh, there's a utility from Smart Modular that follows the spec on error detection and correction and error injection. And it also follows the PCI Express. You know, AER is something you gotta turn on and so that your PCIe Express errors will be detected and reported. And yeah, so CXL has been really lurking here for at least three generations of CPU. And so it feels like at this point in 2025 that it's a mature technology, as long as you have a, a recent or relatively recent platform. Uh, these uh, these CXL cards do support secure boot, um, programmable scrub, attestation, key management. They have an advanced supply chain features as well. So you can the, you can create your own encryption certificates, enroll them with the encryption certificates, and then you can authenticate the specific piece of hardware across your whole enterprise. So if you get a shipment of these, you can do the supply chain verification, create a certificate, enroll them, and then cryptographically be sure that this device was not swapped out for one that was compromised in some way so somebody could read your, your memory from your servers or whatever. There's some wild stuff that goes on in some of these data centers that aren't really as certified as they need to be because hey, everybody needs a lot of server space, uh, data center space, and we'll just, we won't look too close. That's on, oh, it's, this data center's under a bridge. Uh, it's not great. There's also some promising stuff for the future of CXL. Um, remember our liquid PCIe fabric? Well, if not, this is a device that allows you to programmatically map PCIe devices to hosts in real time. Every host has a PCIe breakout card that runs to a switch, basically, and the switch will route PCIe cards. Well, guess what? CXL, the protocol, supports device pooling like that. It's more sophisticated uh, and you need more stuff like this. And this might be a building block for that, but you need some other hardware because these platforms aren't gonna support that by themselves. And so you can share memory among hosts, not, not at the same time, not at the same time, of course. But if you're running a job where you temporarily need a couple extra terabytes of memory, with something like that, you could run a couple commands and then map more memory to a system like this and then once you're done, release it. Kind of like a virtual machine, except instead of a virtual machine, it's real, actual, physical hardware. Now, this is not a, a paid ad, but I did request that Smart Modular send these to me so that I could evaluate them and do some AI experiments that uh, need a lot of memory, more memory than you can really get in a one or a two socket configuration. And uh, I think I should also do some database workload testing, but love your feedback on what you'd like to see with a CXL device. Because I know there's a, there's, there's a fair bit of skepticism. I was like, oh, well, CS, CXL will be useful. And with volume sales, the cost will come down. And yes, yeah, CXL is absolutely useful if it's a commodity item and you could just, you have the PCIe connectivity, and you can throw it in the system. I mean, holy crap, I can use all the memory channels plus the CXL device? That's the future that I wanna be living in. But let's chat about what you'd like to see tested with CXL, what sort of workload, I think database is the next obvious one, but let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, hit me up in the forum. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.